Hi, I'm Bob Hanlon. Have you ever wondered why when you depressurize the tire on your bicycle, the air coming out feels a little bit cooler than what you thought it would be? Well, I'll bet you did, and I'll bet you want to understand that. And so that's what I'm here to talk with you about today. So to talk about that, we first need to talk a little bit about gas temperature and what influences it. Well, what influences gas temperature is, is the speed of the molecules and atoms in the gas. The faster they're moving, the hotter that gas is. So if you want to understand why the gas temperature changes, you really have to understand why the speed of the molecules change. And really, absent any external forces like gravity, the only way that the speed of a gas molecule changes is by interacting with other gas molecules or atoms. And there's two ways that the gas molecules interact with each other. Let's talk about those. In the first way, it's just pure collision. When a fast-moving molecule or atom hits a slow-moving molecule or atom, the fast becomes slower and the slow becomes faster. And this is what happens with temperature. A system of high-temperature gas molecules interacting with a system of low-temperature gas molecules, this plays out many, many, many times. And so the high-temperature gas starts decreasing in temperature and the low-temperature gas starts increasing in temperature. So there's another way, though, that this plays out. And sometimes these atoms that we're showing are, are actually, the atoms are embedded in a wall. This happens, for example, in a piston in cylinder assembly, as you can see here. A piston is moving into the cylinder in which is contained gas. You can see when the gas atom, say the blue atom, which is a slow moving atom, hits that piston as it's moving in, it rebounds with a higher speed. And so in this, just like a ping pong paddle when it hits a ball, if you move the paddle towards the ball, the ball jumps off that paddle at a faster speed. So in this way, when you do a compression of a gas inside a cylinder, the gas temperature increases. There's another way to, that the atoms interact with each other to influence temperature, and this has to do with this fact. Atoms, you can view an atom as a spinning magnet. In the middle of the atom, in the center, is a positively charged proton, and outside the atom is a negatively charged electron. The electron moves around the atom, and this way the atom is like a spinning magnet. And because of this, the atoms will both attract each other and repel each other. It's an inherent polarity of the atom that results in this. What do I mean by this? Well, so the attraction occurs when the electrons are apart from each other, they're not facing each other, and the electron from one atom is close to the proton of the other, and that's where the uh, attractive force is. When the electrons are facing each other, like down here, that's where the repulsive force is. These two forces of attraction and repulsion happen for all atoms. And it's really these two phenomenon, the collisions up here and the attractive and repulsive forces down here, that lead to the thermodynamic phenomena that we observe, the macroscopic phenomena, such as heat transfer, condu uh, conduction, uh, the condensation, vaporization, and finally, to the main topic of this talk here, the Joule-Thompson effect. Let's get to that. What is the Joule-Thompson effect? Back in the mid-1850s, James Joule and William Thompson studied the depressurization of a gas from a high-pressure system through a valve to a low-pressure here they noted that the temperature of the high pressure gas here was different than the temperature of the gas coming out of the system. Sometimes the exit gas was hotter, sometimes it was cooler. But they studied this and quantified this. And the question was, why is that occurring at a molecular level? So a month ago, I shared with you the results of a survey that I asked readers of my blog, hey, what are your personal pain points or stumbling blocks in learning thermodynamics? What are the challenges? One of the challenges that came back to me was, you know, what is the cause of the Joule-Thompson effect? What's going on at the molecular level of colliding, moving, interacting atoms that leads to that, leads to this change in temperature between the high pressure and the low pressure system? Well, so that's what I'm setting out to study. And, and fortunately, there's a small group of thermodynamic enthusiasts who have volunteered to help me out with this because to really answer this question, is going to require mathematical and computer modeling. Let me talk with you a little bit about that modeling effort that we're, we're working on. The modeling really comes down to what is known as molecular dynamics simulation. 
you can simulate a large number of moving and colliding atoms in these simulations. And there, it's some very simple rules govern all of this. The rules are basic Newtonian mechanics up here, but also a Leonard Jones equation here to account for the uh, to account for the attraction and repulsion between atoms. So the Newtonian mechanics help with the collisions here, and the Leonard Jones equation helps with this type of behavior here, the attraction and repulsion. Those can all go into this simulation here, and it can lead to, hopefully, I believe, an explanation of what's going on microscopically that leads to the macroscopic phenomenon known as the Joule Thompson effect. I hope to have an answer for you in about a month or at least some preliminary results. So stay tuned. Thank you for listening and goodbye.